Let's turn this long exposure into a black and white image following just four simple steps using a bit of Lightroom editing. If you want to follow along as always you can do that by downloading the raw file from the link you can find in the description of this video and now let's begin. So in general my editing process for black and white images is usually I first do the black and white transformation and then there are the basic adjustments with which I get the basic exposure right preparing the image for some masking which is coming in the third step. And finally we can fine tune color contrast using the color mixer. So it's really pretty simple. Let us start by opening up the basic panel. And for the black and white conversion we simply need to click on the black and white button and that's all there is to do. Now the tonal adjustments. We want to prepare the image for the masking. We just want to get the basic exposure right and we don't necessarily have to worry about contrast because we're going to use masks later on to target areas locally. But first let me bring down the highlights overall. You can see bringing them down all the way reveals these nice long exposure clouds in the sky. We have way more detail this way. I'm also going to bring up the blacks very very slightly. There is a little bit of underexposure in the very near foreground. You can see that when I hold down the Alt key and click on the blacks slider, you can see some black dots in the foreground. These underexposed areas are not that important for the overall image. So I'm okay with those being underexposed. In fact, I actually want to bring down the shadows, which will lead to a little more underexposure in these areas. But bringing down the shadows will also help add some overall contrast. I'm going to touch the contrast slider as well, bringing it up slightly. And since I want my black and white images to be sharp and clear, I'm going to add texture. And I'm also going to add clarity, which will affect the midtones. And let's add some dehaze for some more clearness. Wonderful. Now you might think, since we're working on a black and white image, the vibrance and saturation sliders are grayed out, but why do we have the white balance sliders? You can actually change the white balance and it will change the appearance of the image. As you can see, if I bring up and down the temperature slider. So we can make use of that and kind of influence the brightness of certain areas, like the field in the foreground. If I bring up the temperature, the field in the foreground will get brighter. So I want to use this and just slightly bump up the temperature to somewhere around 7300 I guess. And I'm also going to play around with the tint a little bit. Let's see what this does. Bringing down the tint will affect the sky. Bringing up the tint will kind of change the foreground as well. I do think I want to slightly bring it up but not too much. And that is the image after the basic adjustments. So let's compare to before real quick. Obviously we started with the color image, but now we can actually see some details in the sky with those nice long exposure clouds. And the foreground does look a little bit brighter and more contrast rich thanks to that white balance adjustment. Now on to step three, the masking. Open up the masking panel first. And I usually like to start working on the sky. So what I'm doing now is to create a simple sky selection. And I want to subtract a linear gradient coming up from the foreground. And the reason is I want to make the top part of the sky darker without affecting the bottom part. This way we can create a very, very dramatic sky with a wider tonal range. Let's bring down the exposure a little bit. And let's also bring down the blacks to further make it darker. Perfect. I'm going to add a linear gradient right away. I'm going to be stacking multiple masks on top of each other for the sky with different adjustments. So we get a little more natural result and we do have more control. I want this linear gradient coming in from the left side. I want the left side to be slightly darker. And I'm going to bring down the blacks again. The reason I'm bringing down the blacks and not the exposure is with the exposure I would affect all the tonal values, so the highlights and the shadows. But bringing down the blacks, we will just target the darker areas. And this will add contrast since we're darkening the darkest parts while not affecting these clouds up here. So by doing this, we kind of add more structure to the sky. I want to add one more linear gradient on top. 
like this and this time i'm going to bring down the exposure a little bit because i also want to make those clouds a little darker right in this area and i'm going to add some contrast again this just helps to make the area darker uh, maybe let's bring it down a little further and i'm going to add one more linear gradient a really really small one on the very top again just bringing down the blacks for more darkness up there okay that looks great let me real quick show you the difference from before with just a bunch of basic adjustments to after with the sky changed thanks to masks um i do want to add some glow coming in from the right side so i'm going to use a radial gradient for that something like this looks good i'm going to place the center outside of the image just to get a more natural effect maybe let's make it a little wider in this radial gradient what i'm going to do is to bring up the whites now this will lead to overexposure but i think just a little bit of overexposure should be fine it's not too dramatic and we get this nice bright spot in here i'm also going to add some negative dehaze which adds some very subtle glow effect so let's say right around minus 13 should be fine now I'm quite happy with the sky, but obviously we also need to work on the foreground. And I'm starting this using another simple linear gradient again. I want to cover the very near foreground, which I want to make darker to kind of create a vignetting effect. And thus we're just leading the viewer's eye more towards the center of the image. So what I mean by that is I'm going to bring down the highlights first. This will have a very, very minor effect on the brightness, but I'm also going to bring down the shadows and let's raise the contrast and maybe even bring down the blacks you can see i'm kind of intentionally adding more underexposure to this area i just think it looks great for this image then let me cover all of that field using another linear gradient it's slightly tilted so we need to rotate the linear gradient as well and i'm going to say subtract choose a radial gradient and just take it way apart from the center like this so what i want to do here is i want to kind of add some light effect where the field is brighter in the center than it is towards the edges kind of similar like the vignetting effect so what i'm doing with this mask is to bring down the exposure and i'm going to drop it a lot now this might be a bit too much under exposure so what i want to do to fix that is to bring up the blacks very gently now check out what this mask does to the image here without and here with the mask so this serves as another vignetting effect added on top and it just makes the image look much much more interesting since it creates this focus point right in the center where we have all the brightness now let me also target that tree i'm going to use an objects mask for that make sure the rectangle select is selected right here and i'm going to draw a rectangle around the tree this should give us a pretty good selection as you can see what i want to do in here is i just want to make it slightly brighter so let's bring up the shadows just like this wonderful and then let me create a luminance range mask using this luminance range mask i want to target the highlights of the foreground and dodge them or in other words make the highlights in the foreground brighter this adds contrast and again helps to make the image look more interesting. So with the luminance range mask eyedropper active, I'm clicking right in here in the highlights of the foreground. That's looking pretty good already. Let's adjust the luminance range mask a bit. I'm gonna bring up the midtones just a little bit like this. Okay. And of course we don't want to affect the sky. So I'm going to say subtract linear gradient and let's take out the sky like this perfect now with this mask set up what we want to do to dodge these highlights in the foreground is to bring up the highlights and we're going to bring up the whites and this really starts to make the foreground pop so let me deactivate this mask real quick from before to after maybe let's bring down the whites just a little bit but we could try add a bit of clarity as well just to add some more punch but that looks great otherwise now there's one more mask i want to add and that's another mask for the sky i'm going to choose another simple sky selection here 
and I don't want to affect the whole sky. I just want to affect the left side which I want to make slightly brighter. So I'm going to say subtract and let's choose a linear gradient. I'm going to subtract pretty much everything except the part just above the horizon on the left side. And in here, what I want to do is to bring up the whites, which will add some nice brightness to this area. Wonderful. And here we have the image after the masking adjustments. So we started with this being our very, very basic image. And here we have the masks applied on top. Perfect. So we're done with step three of the black and white editing process. Next up, now we can fine tune the color contrast. Therefore, we want to head into the black and white menu right here. And what this does is you can think of it as a luminance slider. So this field in the foreground consists of green and yellow tones. If I adjust the green and yellow slider, you will see the brightness will change. And we can make use of that to add some more interesting points to the image. So what I wanna do is to bring up the yellow luminance a little bit and the green luminance. And this will help get us some more punch on the foreground. Now, if you want, the sky is made up of blue tones. So we can make use of the blue slider, making the sky darker or brighter. So I think this looks quite good. I'm happy with that. Let's do the sharpening in the details tab. And as always, bring down the radius, increase the details, add masking while holding down the Alt key. And we can nicely target the subject this way. And now bring up the amount of sharpening. Done. Then we want to clean up this image. Let's click on remove. And I first want to clean up this sensor spot right here in the sky like this. Perfect. Then let's see. I'm going to click on the remove tool. Here we have generative AI selected. And what we want to do is to kind of paint over these things which we want to clean up. And let's see what this will do. That looks pretty good. Really wasn't expecting that. Let's also get rid of this thing. I'm basically just cleaning up the horizon so we get a more minimalistic image. And let's hit apply once more. And that looks good as well. So I hope this little black and white tutorial was helpful and interesting as always. If you have questions left or if you have anything to add about the editing process, let me know in the comments and thank you so much for watching this video.